So question one then, the first one from paper two of the 2017 New Higher Maths. Here we go, eight marks for lines in a triangle. You're given this triangle and two points on it here, B and C. And you're told that this dotted line, this broken line here, is the perpendicular bisector of BC. And the first part, A, for four marks, is what's the equation of that perpendicular bisector? Well, it's the perpendicular, so right angles, bisector, it goes through the middle. Maybe we'll just call that M. Well, we'll just see what it is here, though. So what is the midpoint of BC? Well, the midpoint of BC will be the point which is halfway between them. And if it's obvious, you could just state it. What's halfway between 0 and negative 2 is negative 1, for instance. But if you wish to calculate it, you'll do that by finding the average of those coordinates. What's halfway between 3 and 9? Well, that'll be 3 plus 9 upon 2. Unless it was obvious, in which case you could just state it. What's halfway between 0 and negative 2? Well, that's 0 plus negative 2 upon 2. I'm just going to give it the name M now. So that's going to be the point, that'll be 6, because that's 12, and that'll be negative 1. Doing that gets the first mark. Now, the other thing you need for the line is, what's its gradient? So you've only got one point in this line, so you'll need to get its gradient by reference to some comparison line, and it's perpendicular to BC. So find the gradient of BC. So it'll be the difference in the y-coordinates over the difference in the x-coordinates, whichever way you wish to write it, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Maybe I'll abbreviate it to difference in y over difference in x. Now I've got these written here so I can see quite clearly. It's negative 2 take away 0, 9 take away 3. But if you didn't have a diagram, sometimes it's safer to put this at the side. I'm going from 3, 0 to 9, negative 2. So it'll be negative 2 take away 0 for the difference in the y-coordinates, 9 take away 3 for the difference in the x-coordinates. And that comes to negative 2 over 6. I should really tidy that up. You could find the perpendicular one just by using them and inverting them if you like, and then simplify. You're better off simplifying it first. Negative a third gets the mark. Strictly speaking, the marking scheme, it gives you the mark there. It allows you to tidy that up later on. But I'm going to put it here. Having the gradient of this line, you can now just state the gradient of the perpendicular line. You don't need to put down an equation. The product of the perpendicular gradient and the gradient equals negative 1, and then solve that equation by taking it across and dividing. You can just say, well, it's the negative of it, so it'll be positive. And if you invert 1 upon 3, you get 3 over 1, which is simply 3. Doing that gets you the next mark. Well, it's tumbling on here. Lastly, what's the equation of the line? Well, I'm going to use y minus b equals mx minus a. Well, that's the form of it, because I've not actually defined what a, b and m are here, because that m's actually that m perpendicular. Maybe I'll just put a wee inverted commas around to say that's the form I'm using without explicitly saying what they are. So, y minus the y-coordinate, because you can just go straight in with this. You don't need to write that down first. Y minus the Y coordinate, and of course it's of the point it's going through. It's not going through B or C, it's going through this point. Y minus the minus 1. Or if you're brave, you could leap in with Y plus 1. Is the gradient, which is 3, times X minus the X coordinate, which is 6. And then tidy that up. 3 times X, minus 18, that's a positive 1. Minus another 1, minus 19. And there's the last mark. Notice, don't leave it floating about the way the SQA let you over a few years in the recent past. No, don't have an equation with two constants floating about. They have to be combined. You can, of course, rearrange that into any pattern you like by flicking those terms about. But that's the most appropriate one, really, isn't it? Y equals. That way, you know what the line looks like. Gradient of 3, cuts the y-axis at negative 19. And if you want to do a substitution, it's perfect. Replace y by this. And so to part B, the line AB makes an angle of 45 degrees to the positive direction of the x-axis. What's the equation of AB? Well, it's a line, so you need a point on it. Well, I've got that, the point B, and then it's gradient, and there immediately. You know the connection, gradient and angle. The gradient is the tangent of the angle, so you'll just state that. The gradient will be the tangent of 45 degrees, and you know that the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. 
That's the first mark. And again, of course, it is paper too. If you didn't remember that, but you should, you can just put it in the calculator. So, you've got the gradient. You know a point on it. It's the point three zero. So you can find the equation. Now, you don't know the point on the y-axis, so it'll have to be the full y minus b, etc. This time I'm just going to leap in with it. y minus the y-coordinate is the gradient times x minus the x-coordinate. So that just gives you y equals x minus 3. Not much to it, that's why it's only worth two marks. Part C. Find the coordinates of the point of intersection of AB and that perpendicular bisector. Well, that's this point here, and we'll give it the name N in this diagram. Though there wouldn't be much point if you didn't have a diagram, you just have to say intersection. Or just not say anything, quite honestly. Well, that means, where's the, what's the point that satisfies this equation and that equation at the same time? Simultaneous equations. I really should have given them names, it was a bit lax. That was the first equation I derived, that was the second equation I derived. If I want the intersection, I'll just put n. Of course, you don't need to put anything, but you could put intersection. That means I'm going to substitute 1 in 2. Substitute 1 in 2. Then again, quite often you just don't write anything. I just like to. So that means I'm going to replace y with 3x minus 19. 3x minus 19 will equal x minus 3. Now, there's only two marks for this, and the way they're marking it is you get one mark for x and one mark for y. So all of this, so taking that across, you've got 2x. Taking 19 across gives you, because it comes across as a plus 19, gives you a 16, so x equals 8. You get one mark for doing that. And then substituting, I'll put it here, x equals 8 in whichever one you like. And again, you don't need to specify it, but I will. I'm putting it into 2 here. I get y equals, now x has been replaced by 8 minus 3, so y equals 5. And, strictly speaking, that's the second mark. Of course, you could argue when it says find the coordinates, there's the x-coordinate, there's the y-coordinate. However, and I'll just finish it off by stating it this way. So the point of intersection is the point 8, 5.